bonita, cosita chula, cosita bonita que dio papá. Así como está, así me gusta. Me gusta. Ay, me tiene loco, loquita, loco, mamá. No salgas a la calle. finally come here in Southern California, IA, where it stopped being as hot as the devil's vaginal walls and it started to cool down a lot. So uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Feels so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Man, there's this uh, video this dude posted I guess in Poland because he's speaking Polish and uh, he's like making this fish mouth open and close and he's singing some Polish shit while doing it it's probably one of the most funniest things I've seen in probably a good year or so I laughed so hard my stomach was hurting I'll let you guys go ahead and see a clip real quick yeah yeah I see a bike on the back of that truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is that? That's super badass. It's a KTM. a topic that was suggested to me to cover and I figured it might help some dudes out had a lot of thumbs up on the comment on my last post asking what you guys would like me to talk about and that was common mistakes new writers make now mind you everything I'm gonna go ahead and say is shit from my own experience or shit I've seen done by other people now, the most vital one, and this is one that, that gets people, is uh, turning. A lot of people think you just lean your body to turn, but it's actually, you gotta learn counter steering. <laughs> so, anybody that's gonna ride, start riding for the first time, or riding right now, and you're having trouble with your leaning or turning and all that, it's probably due to counter steering and I uh, recommend you guys watch a film called Twist of the Wrist 2. Watch them both. I mean, it won't hurt. But that's probably one of the most uh, valuable videos on learning how to ride I've ever seen. And a lot of people will vouch for me on that one. It's a very, very informative video. And simply counter steering, just to, just to talk about for a second, is pulling the left bar to go right. Uh, pulling right to go left or vice versa push right go right push left go left it really requires no leaning your body to move the bike it's all in the counter steering you leaning your body is mostly just assisting the uh, your body position to keep all your weight off the handlebars and that's another thing I need to say never hold your weight on your handlebars with your hands you always want to grip the tank with your legs you want you want your arms to be as loose as possible. Always remember that, as loose as possible on the handlebars. That way, you're not putting too much pressure on the front wheel. The, gu the bike will guide itself that way when you're cornering and whatnot. And basically, you just want to have enough pressure up front just to tell the bike where to go. Other than that, you want the bike to do all on its own. So basically, when you're turning, just always make sure you're looking through your turns. Always look where your bike's going. Your bike's going to always go where you're looking. And just a little short tip for shifting, this is what I do at least. When I shift, right before I shift on my lever, I touch my toe where I feel it on my toe on the shift lever. And then give it a slight, just enough to the friction point. Give it just a, I'm not closing throttle, I'm just letting off throttle. So it's basically like this. That's just a little tip I could give you guys to, um, you know, help with cleaner shifting and make it more like on point, snap on, on point shifting and whatnot. Because 
in my opinion, pushing the clutch all the way in and then letting it all the way out, shifting and then letting it all the way out, that just takes too much time when all you need is just enough clutch to help you glide it like a, like a knife through butter through the gear. That's all you need. More common rider mistakes is chopping your throttle in the turn, which is this. Doing that shit through your turn. Like thinking you're going too fast and you just cut throttle. That really fucks up your motorcycle's line through the turn because you're making the front and rear wheels lose traction and gain traction immediately and that's what fucks you up. And that's a lot of error that caused a lot of crashes and shit. And you also never want to touch your front brake during turning. When you, when you want to brake in your turns, you always want to pre-brake and brake before and that way you can accelerate through your turn once you reach it. Another new rider error I always see and it's an error for the most part but I mean like this all matters on the person so it's not, it, it's your fault you know if you get fucked up but I never see new riders wearing in any gear. Like some of them I do. I mean some of them are well informed. They're responsible. Wear your gear guys. Jacket, gloves, helmet, all the shebanga bang. But obviously, you know, it's your life. You can't have other people telling you what to do, but it's it's the right thing to do, just know, you know. Go ahead and get a little freeway action going on. Another very important thing you all want to learn is downshifting. Assisting, having your engine assist you in your braking, especially in emergency situations. Your brakes used with your engine braking massively helps you sh stop a lot faster than just using brakes alone. Reptar's a little scared. Downshifting is simply giving you giving yourself a little clutch, downshifting into gear, and then giving a, a slight throttle blip. You'll feel it. You're just basically rev matching, like so. And for quick takeoffs, you're gonna want to downshift to put your engine a higher gear, like so. Say hi to my favorite guitarist who ever lived. Literally. The best guitarist in the world in my opinion. And that would be this guy right here.
Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes was the most beast guitar player to this motherfucking day. Love you, Randy. Ma'am, you left your keys in your door. You left your keys in your door. Keys. You, there's keys. Oh wait, that's not a key, never mind. They were in your ignition. She's mad as fuck. Look at her. Look, that's the face going. He just made me look stupid as hell. <laughs> yeah! So guys, I get a lot of questions literally on every video, on every Facebook post I make, everything about fairings, 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 where's your fairings, when you get your fairings? So let me go ahead and update y'all on that one. Uh, I remember I saw these $200 fairings I was going to get and I was super stoked. And when I went to buy them, guess what? The fucking shipping was $200. So actually the fairings were 250, sh the shipping was 200. So they wanted me to spend like 85% of the entire price of the fairings just to ship them. So I couldn't do that because of this reason. I had to spend money, I have to buy this thing, which is a Ram Air Induct, and a front upper fairing stay, which is this. So basically uh, I got fucked over and I was pissed off at that shit. So that's why guys, that I still haven't been able to get my fairings. It's just so much shit on this bike I gotta buy. Look at that dude playing guitar on the bus stop. So with the fairings, the Ram Air Induct, uh, the Ram Air Duct upper fairing stay. I still need to buy this, the oil, the coolant reservoir. It still drip, drips on my coolant, but thankfully my bike never overheats. But uh, yeah, guys, that's the current state of the bike that I'm at right now. I'm hitting up a video game store out here. Best place in town for bargain video games, right here. It says video games in arcade. arcade. It used to be called Gladys Video Games. But uh, yeah, this is it. If you guys are ever in the area, come over here. Since I'm in the area, and you guys love the mystery of it, let's go ahead and look at the cemetery. So as you guys can see, Looks like she's still in the same spot. Still with the gravestone facing that way, opposed to everything else facing this way. But nonetheless, we got some scary shit going down over here. Oh, I'm in the area as well, because I grew up on the street right there. Okay, if you guys remember, if you've seen my older videos, I've talked about a ghost story where me and my friend were fucking around in this abandoned house and I seen a ghost walk right behind his body and it scared the shit out of me where I went. I, my body was petrified. Now, here's the location of that. This is the house that was abandoned. That back garage area was where it was. It was open. And then there was a doorway in the back wall. And then there was like a shelf by that doorway. My friend was all up in that shelf. I was standing right outside the front door of that garage. And sure enough, as he's there, this blue transparent thing walked right beside the doorway, right at him. I looked at him, said, fucking dude, run, run, run. We fucking just started booking it like little fucking bitches. And then, uh, yeah, I've never forgotten that. That scared the shit out of me. And right here, right in front of that one or two door, I forgot which one it was exactly. Uh, a guy was just shot and killed. Left dead laying right there in that exact spot in front of that door. And I remember the cops were all chilling out here. All the fire trucks, ambulances and whatnot. That just happened uh, about three weeks or a month ago. It's pretty crazy because it's right kind of by my house, you know. 
and obviously the most asked question to any moto vlogger in the world what's a good starter bike all right so i've known i've covered starter bikes before but i figure since i always get asked about it still to this day we can go ahead and talk about it once more maybe in a little more detail so plain and simple this is basically how it is so basically when it comes to starter bikes you want something that you're responsible enough to control i won't lean in this corner by that kind of car and uh you want something that isn't too heavy for you that's not too big for you it could be if you can control it but the fundamentals of what i'm trying to talk about is it's what's right for you you know what's right for you i don't know you i've never talked to you i don't know your body type i don't know how much you weigh i don't know your skill level i don't know how responsible you are you see how that works out so it's hard for you just to ask some random person what's a good starter bike Hell, for all I know, some of you guys could fucking have the responsibility and skills and but maybe bikes are in your nature and you can jump on a fucking ZX-14 and start, you know, for all I know. See, I just don't know you. That's the problem. It's, it's a really hard question. I can't just tell you what to get. But I will assure you this. If you get anything in the 600cc range or lower, no matter who you are, you're always gonna you're gonna get used to it even if it feels overwhelming to you it's never gonna be too fast for you and if it is and you just don't get used to it and you just can't grasp the concept of the riding then that's just that's just nature telling you that you're just not meant for motorcycles because honestly six six hundreds are fast don't get me wrong but they're not overwhelming you know, you're not going to flip the throttle and fall, fly backwards. This is what happens when you give it immediate power. You're just going to accelerate fast. Maybe first gear you'll power wheelie. But mostly, you know, you're just going to accelerate really fast. When it comes to the leader bikes, that's when you can actually do, you know, power wheelies and whatnot. you know these things are a lot more jerky than a 250 or a ninja 300 but you're gonna get used to it they're not overwhelming so to close this argument what you need to do is go to your local dealership sit on some bikes make sure even the ergonomics just feels right to you you'll feel it it'll feel nice and what will help even better is if you have a buddy that has a bike he'll let you ride if he trusts you on it to ride it slow around the parking lot that'll at least give you the sense and concept in your head enough to know what you can handle and what you want as you guys can tell it's an absolutely gorgeous day We've got helicopters flying in the air beautiful blue skies a slight wind breeze couldn't be any better It's a beautiful day, let's get back on the road. Look, there's a nice MR2 for all you car enthusiasts and a GTS. I catch you guys spotting cars and shit in my videos, but I don't notice. <laughs> so guys, I hope my video some new rider errors maybe uh, a couple things I said helped you guys out hope you guys you guys you get an idea on what to get as a first bike and uh, yeah What's your username? Huh? Roscoe891. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to be on this one. Alright, awesome, man. <laughs> Have a good one. I thought you were going too slow on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the second time out here I've been noticed. Then the other guy drove a white Honda Civic too, but it was an older one. <laughs> well guys, that's going to go ahead and conclude today's moto vlog adventure. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit the out of that like button. And you guys have yourselves a fantastic day. See you later, guys.